Hello everyone, welcome to GoTerran TV. I'm Taryn the Traveling Trainer with GoTerran Personal Training here in the greater Atlanta area. About to welcome back another awesome fitness professional here in Atlanta, Georgia as well, Mr. Shaman Weissman. And we're going to be having him back on here in just a moment. But before we do, I'd like to ask everyone out there, if you please be so kind as to like this video, leave us a comment and share it with all of your friends and family out there. Now, you got to meet Mr. Shaman Weissman for the very first time last month here on GoTerran TV. He is the founder of Quick Fit Training, and he's going to be back on here. And hey, let's face it, it's been a month since I spoke to this gentleman, and we have not talked about the crazy COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic that's uh, just crazily going through this whole country right now. So I'm going to get his take on it, his perspective, uh, has it impacted him? Uh, in his world of personal training and everything he's doing. So we will find that out momentarily. And uh, we will have Shaman right back on here in just a few moments. So remember that go turn personal training is your time, your investment, and your life. We'll be back in a second. Welcome back, everyone. And as I promised, side by side, there we are welcoming once again, Mr. Shimon Weissman from Atlanta, Georgia. Shimon, how are you doing out there today? Thank you. I'm doing great, uh, despite the pandemic going on, and I'm, I'm happy to be on this uh, call. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm so glad to see you and, uh, you know, grateful that you're doing well. And uh, you nailed the um, uh, topic of discussion on the head. Uh, last time you and I spoke on here, it was wild because it was literally just before this whole thing uh, broke out. And now what a different world we are living in. So um, I guess my first question right off the bat, Shimon, is how is this, um, you know, it's impacted everybody. There's no question about it. Nobody is unaffected from this. But especially the personal trainers and fitness professionals, uh, us being a service industry. Um, how overall has this uh, impacted or changed uh, your work, and um, how has it affected your lifestyle pretty much? Um, so it actually, in the beginning, it affected it a lot because okay. I, I, it, it started uh, becoming very big in New York. Right. And it spread here a little bit slower. So yes. my family, schools were closing down. Uh, the business were closing down, everything like that. But then when it, at that point, I was still hoping to go with my normal routine because I hadn't come here yet. Right. But, but um, slowly then it did inculcate into Atlanta. So um, a lot less clients were scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, and that was before we knew, I knew how serious it was so that I totally stopped meeting in person. Right. But um, uh, yeah, less, less people, you know, uh, comfortable with coming to the home gym and working out, being in physical contact. <clears throat> so at yeah. first, to put it very frankly, I was getting a lot of no's. Mm -hmm. I was getting mm -hmm. a lot of no's mm -hmm. and that affected me because what I'm trying to do is be with people and helping them get fit and healthy, right. you know, person to person and being there for them. And when people say no to that, it's really hard. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you're right, Shimon. And the thing is, and uh, I want to get to, I, I know you're going to do just fine because uh, I want to talk to you about virtual training. That's one thing we didn't really jump into last time and something that you've mastered and perfected almost. And so uh, before I ask you about that, um, I just wanted to say this is definitely temporary. I think that's the one thing that um, I keep sharing with my clients and keep uh, kind of mentioning to everybody out there that uh, not only is this affecting every, – everybody's going through it right now, but I think that uh, we have to keep our eye on the ball that right now, um, you know, if, if we look at it as a scientific graph and you know how it's got that uh, kind of a, a pandemic, I guess is the word, and then eventually it will slow down and right. taper off, and they use that word, the flattening of the curve. Nobody knows where we're at on that thing right now, and every day it seems like we keep escalating or like a roller coaster, but – uh, the good news is, is this is not permanent, so uh, that's great. But, you know, I think that, you know, what you just mentioned in terms of uh, I share with you the same thing. A lot of no's for me, a lot of obviously nobody wanting to meet at the gyms because they're all closed. Oh, really? oh yeah, because uh, literally, I guess it was a few days ago from when we were recording this, all the gyms closed down. Even my personal gym that I go to, I mean, it's frustrating. Like we can't I don't think there's one gym in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken, that you can actually go to right now. Uh, even condo gyms and uh, private apartment gyms, I'm hearing, they're all shut down. Um, so it's really uh, – yeah, yeah it, it, it's amazing. It's really, really incredible. But 
I wanted to ask you because um, I pretty much figured you would uh, do just fine and get through this temporarily. Uh, what has been your backup plan, and can you talk a little bit about the uh, virtual training that you offer, please? Thank you. Thank you. So are, are you having a little connection trouble? Um, because I, I saw it. It was a little spotty there. Early. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, it was delaying. It okay. was a lag there for a second. But you're good. Okay. You're coming. Because I can, I, can, okay, I can change rooms if it gets bad. Oh, no problem. No, okay. it's, it's crystal so, clear. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's starting to get bad. <laughs> oh, there you are. Um, let's give it a little shot, and I'll switch rooms if it doesn't work. No problem. Okay. No problem. All right. So in terms of virtual training, so that's when I had a, a little paradigm shift because, honestly, I'm such a sh savage when it comes to training that I was like, okay, um, we don't have we don't have person we can't train in person. Let's do a FaceTime session. Right. So even with the people that I wasn't previously doing FaceTime session, mm -hmm. I was like, hey, you know, this is crazy, but your health is so important right now because the what I found out is the main reason why people are dying from COVID. Um, uh, the, the main thing that led to death was obesity. Good point. Yes. And 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 diabetes was right. was also co significant comorbid with that. And I got that from my brother, who's a doctor working uh, uh, overtime on COVID in in New York. Oh wow. And I got it from one of my clients at Emory, who's a doctor oh, working wow. at uh, wow. emergency night shifts for sure. for that in in Atlanta here. Mm -hmm. And I got it from another emergency room doctor. That that was the main thing. So I'm like, hey guys, like this is real. Let's do this. Now's the time. Wow. Um, um, and, and, uh, it didn't, wasn't working at first because I think that people very reasonably, this is, they've never, nobody's experienced anything like this. I haven't either. And they're like, whoa, 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 everything like, no, cut off everything. I'm just going to see what happens. And then like a week later, pe yeah, people were like, okay, you know, this is serious, but yeah, yeah, we can train. Like that's still important. Mm -hmm. So then the FaceTime session started happening and then I felt a lot better because, uh, mm. What what a lot of people don't realize is that, I mean, m my clients need me, but I need them. I right. really need them because right. I love training them, and it's what I, makes me happy. Oh, yeah. You know, well said, Shimon, and I'm so happy that this has worked out, that uh, you're just, you know, again, just right on it with the, like you said, remote training or virtual training on FaceTime. And that's so awesome that you offer that as a service to, you know, again, this is the time to be um, creative right now. And the cool thing about it is that, um, you know, for example, these big mo uh, big gyms like um, commercial gyms like Gold's Gym or LA Fitness and such, they can't be that creative and offer a temporary solution like that, right? And uh, whereas you uh, pretty much can be very creative and unique and be able to uh, still be able to, quote, see your clients uh, virtually – and be able to offer them uh, this wonderful service. But the other thing I wanted to tell you that you hit the nail on is that right now with this whole quarantine and being isolated at home, what else is there to do? People can't get out. They can't exercise. They feel like they can't at least. They, they're they stuck at home. They're watching TV. They're turning into couch potatoes and eating bad. So what you offer is undoubtedly one of the things that they should be taking advantage of. Uh, they should be contacting you and making sure that they're at least doing in-home exercising or getting out there and working out. I think that's phenomenal that you're doing that. So I commend you for, uh, you know, keep doing that. That's that's just great. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it and sounds yeah. like, and you, you also, you understand it fully and, and you're saying it so clearly. It's excellent. It's very refreshing to hear. Thank you. No, I mean, you know, again, I, I think that uh, the thing is who I really feel for right now is that is very, very suffering in this industry. I mean, there's so many different, um, obviously, uh, tangents that are hurt. But, you know, we think about the restaurants and the servers or waiters oh, yeah. and cooks and oh, such yeah. that if they're living paycheck to paycheck and if they don't have that big safety net and they're relying on a paycheck and they don't get any kind of severance or temporary, um, you know, I, what I'm hearing a lot of right now, I'm sure you've heard the same thing. A lot of companies are just doing full layoffs so that that way they don't have to pay a salary or wages to their employees just because maybe they can't afford it or whatever option they're choosing to do that. And a lot of people right now, unfortunately, are going unemployed, and uh, a lot of them aren't even eligible for unemployment insurance. You know, so um, it, it's it's again unique in this industry that you and I can kind of recognize and identify 
Um, you know, when times like this happens, when a big shift, you just figure out what can I do about it and how can I best transition this. So um, I, I really got to say I, I give you a lot of credit for being so smart and intelligent on, um, you know, focusing and shifting your business model that way. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Uh, also, I did switch my audio source. Is it coming in clearly now, or is there a problem with it? Oh, it's perfect. I can hear you great. Okay. Can you hear me okay, Sean? Perfect. Okay, perfect. yeah. I'm looking at the audio levels. It's coming up perfectly. And, okay. um, But, you know, again, I think that um, this – let's face it. Maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, you and I probably wouldn't be able to do even what we're doing right now right. or being able to do the uh, FaceTime workouts, uh, which is terrific. And. Uh, the other thing, too, this is, and again, you tell me if you've experienced this same kind of uh, feedback. Some of my clients who I do virtual training with over FaceTime have told me that basically they were so grateful that I showed up because it's an accountability thing, that even they might know uh -huh. how to do the workout, they might know yeah. the routine, and they might not need you and I to watch their form all the time so much. But I had several clients tell me, they said, thank God you're on FaceTime and you offered this, Taryn, because otherwise uh, I need the accountability. I'm sure you've probably heard the same thing. How important is accountability with your clients that they expect from you to be there? Uh, I think it's it's vital. I mean, I think if there wasn't accountability, then yeah. most of it wouldn't happen. Right. And, uh, you know, it just kind of go lackadaisical through life in terms of fitness and exercise. And, and you know, that's not what we're about, you know. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is uh, my clients have enjoyed the FaceTime sessions more than me because <laughs> I, <don't really, laughs> I don't really like them. I like to be there with the person, but they're having a good they're having a good time and getting good feedback. They see, see them excited. And that's it's it really helped. It really helps me. It's really nice. Well, the you know what you provide, Shimon, is that like uh, with this quote social distancing, this is the closest you could be to your clients with all things considered. I mean, that's just the way it is. Like there's things that we can and can't control. We can't control this uh, pandemic, this virus, how long it's going to be here, when it's going to leave. But what we can do is, again, this FaceTime reality, virtual reality, being there as close as you can physically with them. Uh, I'll say it again. I really think that they need that accountability and that commitment because if you weren't there watching them, they might feel like, and again, I'm guilty of it myself. If I feel like I can cheat or kind of take it half ass or just say, you know what, I'll just really? uh, not put as much weight on. I'm the first one that admits, I, oh, I'm very guilty of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll get away with murder. So I would be a uh, probably difficult client to train. But, you know, I, I'll, you know, again, I see it. And, and again, I don't, uh, I think that clients out there, uh, what they recognize is if they're stuck at home, face. let's face it, what else can they possibly do? Okay, they can Netflix binge, they can watch Hulu and Amazon Prime, they can watch movies, they could sit down on the couch and be inside. But after a while right now, th this has got to be driving them stir crazy or they get that cabin fever. So yes. what you and I offer is, um, you know, again, I think that it's important that they take advantage of you and reach out to you to uh, be able to do this. And again, the, the great thing about FaceTime, again, you know, you can do this and it allows us to be able to have this service that you can provide your clients. And I'll say it again, too. I'll reiterate, this is a temporary solution. We will be back to normal hopefully soon. Um, and I keep uh, mentioning this as well, too. I wanted to ask your opinion on this, too. Um, some of my clients, um, I, I, and I know, again, you tell me, some of them have been having this doom and gloom, kind of Debbie Downer, negative Nancy, like, you know, it's the end of the world, it's the apocalypse, this is going to get worse, blah, blah, blah. And I see that it really becomes politicized, too, a lot of political divisiveness and, and just negative energy. I shared with my clients that I wasn't even going to watch the news. I, I stopped watching the news literally about a week and a half ago when this whole thing started. And I haven't gone on my retirement accounts. I haven't looked at that. And I haven't been on social media, like reading the wow. news feed, because I find it very negative overall. Wow, but, wow. I mean, I, I never... don't know. Like, what do you, <laughs> what's your interpretation of that? How do you perceive that with the, what's going on with the way people are just saying it's getting worse every day and the news is – is that unfair to generalize, or do you see some of that perception as well? So, first of all, I n I've never seen you go, go off on a, on a rant like that. <laughs> That's really cool to see. Uh, yeah, you got fierce there. Um, so, I, you know, I, if people are like really affected, like they got sick or they yeah. know somebody that's ill, that, you know, or, or somebody died, God forbid, or lost a job, you know, that's really tough. Oh, and, yeah, absolutely. And, and there's got to be, un, you know, untold sympathy for that. Oh, gosh. Um, yes, at the absolutely. same time, though, if it's whatever it's not affecting you as, don't let it affect you. So if you can have a great workout, if you can have a great day, if you can 
think of something different to do that that reinvents you and transforms you as a person or as a possibility, then take it because mm-hmm. if this is your life and, and this is an opportunity. So somebody told me that um, he's and I and I had a I had a poor mentality before this, but he told me he said there's no way that we can come out of this the same. He said you mm. you, 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 you have to transform yourself. And um, right after I got off that call, I got out of my negative mentality. And I started streaming. I became mm. a video game streamer out of nowhere. <laughs> and I had always played video games my, when I was younger. Yeah. But I, I just like, nah, I can't stream. Like, what? But I got on Twitch, and, and I'm having fun. And, um, and, and after I did that, other things opened up for me. My, my personality opened up a little bit, and training took off. So, And I thought, thought of doing something which I think is very helpful for trainers <clears throat> Excuse me. now, is I just pulled, um, pulled it just out of thin air to go to parks, go to local parks, mm-hmm. have exercise groups, small groups, yes, 15 yes. people 15 feet away from each other, Good call. no physical mm-hmm. contact, right, be right. very careful about that. And in the sun, it's, it's 80 degrees here in Georgia. We're not living in Maine or, or Oregon or whatever. Good point. You know, it's beautiful. Yep. So, um, and it's relaxing and exercising outdoors is, I think, more effective than indoors. It's harder, but it's, but it's great stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you get the sun, you get, you know, again, just a uh, good exposure to just good climate. And uh, right now, you're right, we're lucky. And um, uh, let's hope that it, uh, the rain stays off. And we got enough of that earlier this year, <laughs> as it was. But um, no, I mean, everything you just said, I mean, definitely spot on. And in terms of, um, you know, looking at I like what you said about, you know, refocusing your energy on something as simple as gaming, you know, and streaming and doing that. Uh, I think that's important that people uh, definitely do that and, and just kind of realize they're going to get through this. And, you know, um, I keep hearing every day about the uh, different, you know, again, we're getting different timelines. Are we aiming towards, you know, again, the middle of April? Are we looking at uh, the end of April? And, and some people I've even heard said it could go on for months, but nobody really knows. And um, I think that um, it's important for us to just like you said, focus our uh, positive thoughts and uh, good energy um, into constructive things. So um, that that's really great. I mean, I'm so glad that um, you've really, um, you know, just focused on that. And another thing I made note of, uh, I didn't want to um, forget about this. I want to make sure because last time you and I talked uh, post oh, off boy. camera, you mentioned about a snake bite too. I wanted to ask you about that before uh, it was too late uh, during this call. So if you don't mind kind of changing sure. gears here, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because again, and I, you got, I, I gave you a little snippet, but I want you to kind of lay it out, please, and sure. share with everybody out there what happened, please. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. So um, it's actually a good segue into the conversation because it's really all about adversity and, and paradigm shift. Uh-huh. Um, right. Because I was doing great. I was running with my dog in the woods. We have a beautiful German Shepherd. Oh, nice. And, um, you know, I give her good exercise and I love nature. It's so peaceful to run in nature. Yes. And, you know, I love running in the, in the woods because the, the grass and the dirt is such good padding on the knees. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't build wear and tear. Mm-hmm. So we were on a beautiful run and out of nowhere, I felt like a, a stab on the top of my foot. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, did I step on a twig? Like in, instantaneously, I was like, that, that, that twig, cause that's happened before. And, and then I was like, what, on the top of my foot? So I looked around like, I looked around while I was running, and I saw it was a coiled snake like this with oh, its wow. tongue out. Oh, And wow. it was like hissing at me. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know if I can <laughs> swear on there. So, and, and I never stopped running. I, I, I looked back, and I was like, I'm like, I'm like, my whole, my, I'm like, oh, my God, my whole life changed. Oh, wow. Um, Because I realized how serious it was right away. Yeah, wow. I pushed my dog out of the way right after I saw the snake because I didn't want her to come back and fight it or whatever. And I ran as fast as as I've ever run by far. Oh, wow. Um, With my dog, we we lost a leash somewhere in the woods. And I pulled out my cell phone. I I called the 911 while I was running and um, ran back to our apartment like, you know, you know, threw my dog in the apartment. Uh, I tried to grab some water because I hadn't had anything the whole day. And, like, I spilled all over the place. I couldn't even get water in a cup. Oh, my God. And then I realized I better get out of my apartment because I don't know how long the Phantom's going to set in. And Because I knew right away it was a copperhead. Because oh, when I moved wow. here, I did research on the snakes because I heard that they were here. Mm. And I knew it was really serious. Mm-hmm. So 
I got out of the apartment complex. I don't want like the, the paramedics or whatever coming into my apartment while I'm screaming in pain. And then my German shepherd is there. They got all this big equipment. I mean, she's going to bite them, you know? Oh, yeah. So I tried to run to the outside of the apartment complex. But then I was still on the phone with 911 and they told me, stop running. So I had to yell for somebody to come help me and we hopped to the front office. Oh my God. And then I got there and the firefighters were there and um, he checked my bite and he's like, we got a patient here with three snake bites and we, I'm like, three? I, you know, I just got bit by one and I looked over and I saw that there were six fang marks oh. on my foot. Oh. And um, then I was like, you know, this is real serious. And I had just come back from visiting my grandfather who, who had just passed away, unfortunately, in New York. Mm -hmm. And it was my mom's dad. And I was like, oh, my God, um, is my mom going to lose her son and father like mm -hmm. within a few days? Oh, my God. And the worst thing was is that as they were putting me in the ambulance, um, uh, I, I kept I asked the, param the, the, the paramedic, you know, have you dealt with this before? What's going to happen? And as he was closing the doors, he said, the last person that I worked on that had this died on me. Oh, God, I can't <laughs> believe he said that. Oh, man, yeah. that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. that's insane. I can't yeah, believe yeah. that paramedic said that. I would have punched him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so my goodness. Wow. But, uh, yeah, just to skip ahead a, a ton because I don't want to take up the whole time on, on this. But we, we were in the hospital until um, like 2 a.m. Oh. And... Um, and, the start, and it happened at 10 a.m. So um, uh, it, w it was a whole ride of, you know, high adrenaline and then slowly the pain setting into like near unbearable levels that were just like, like I was like just screaming. And, and, oh. and, and uh, I'm a pretty tough guy. I can handle pain pretty good. Um, but it was like nothing else. Oh, wow. And it ended up being that I didn't take any pain medication or any antivenom either mm. um, and just let it ride itself out. I figured that I did enough exercise and ate well enough that that's all I needed. Mm. And it worked. It worked. Even though the doctors did not advise that I do that, I was very insistent. Hmm. And um, eventually we got home. And this is where the real paradigm and adversity was, is that I was a personal trainer. I like to work out. It's mm -hmm. good for my mindset. It's who I am. And then being stuck, not being able to move, mm -hmm. like it's agonizing to move. And um, for for the, the the recovery time on it was slated for. He said, "I'm not going to begin to get better for two weeks." Oh wow! And mm, then the healing will take about two months. Oh, and some symptoms won't lap, won't go away till five to seven months. Like, oh, so oh wow, that's so that long. was crazy. Yeah, but I also was not willing for that to be the case. So I started bench pressing on my bed, mm. and mm. I, you know, hopped around with the with the. Uh, crutches and did anything I could, but it was very important not to push it. And I think that this is a good lesson in general to anybody that's injured mm -hmm. or um, they important to know their body when they're exercising, not to push themselves too much is listen to yourself carefully and make sure you're not overdoing it. Because if you just have a good workout, there's always another day where you can do another one mm -hmm. and recovering from injury is huge uh, to do it, to do it well and, 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 and a good pace and then you'll get better faster rather than just overdoing it and then really suffering. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it, it basically it taught me that um, when this is over, when I get myself back, I am going to be back. Mm -hmm. And nobody's going to be able to stop me. I don't care what, if I'm supposed to lose a little mobility in my foot or maybe whatever it's going to happen, I'm going to make sure that I'm back. And I think that's what's going on with this pandemic is that we have to tell ourselves as personal trainers and as people who are into exercising and being healthy that we're we're going to be back and we're going to be back much stronger than ever because mm -hmm. we know what we want and as soon as we're allowed to we'll get it wow yeah very well said that's an incredible story shaman i just can't believe that um oh that's amazing that happened to you i'm so happy that you're okay do you have any um after long-term effects from that injury besides psychological damage of course but like the foot like physically do you have any kind of pain from it still so actually um I started walking after half a week and oh, man. covered in, in like two weeks to to a month. I wow. think up by a month I was normal, um, which wasn't supposed to happen. Right, right. Um, but um, what's lasting now is two things. Number one, anytime I'm around any sort of brown leaves, 
that, mm. Because that's mm-hmm. where the snake was hidden. It was perfectly camouflaged. I mean, it's a chocolate, uh, you know, it's a light tan color with chocolate chips on its back. Okay. And it blends perfectly into these, these leaves. So I'm very cautious. Normally, I'd love to be in nature, and now I'm very hesitant, and I have to get yeah, over that. That's good to know. And uh, yeah. the second thing is, like, sometimes I feel like uh, if I'm squatting or whatever, my toes don't go exactly where they would have before naturally. And I kind of have to like move them with my hand to make them go into position. But that's very rare. It's just a little lasting reminder. But overall, the athleticism is in his back. The balance was what I really had to work on. That's what took the longest. But Mm. it's all back. Mm. That's so great. I mean, that's uh, just amazing. You made such a terrific recovery. And I think that speaks volumes that, you know, most people who – probably the average individual who doesn't exercise or might be even uh, overweight or obese, they could have probably had, I'm guessing, a much different outcome, not just probably a longer recovery, but uh, maybe even so like uh, as extreme as death, who knows? I mean, uh, it goes back to what you mentioned earlier in the video blog about the other medical doctors who were telling you that um, obesity, uh, you know, directly linked with this uh, coronavirus uh, is nothing to take, uh, you know, lightly. So uh, it's good that I think what everything you just put in there with the story and just uh, flowed so well um, to be able to help people out there. And uh, Shaman, this half hour has just flown by so fast. Before I let you go, I've got a few more questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, Let's do it. Absolutely. So, yeah, the uh, first question I have for you, people watching, uh, they want to get in touch with you. Let's say that they want to work out with you virtually through quick fit training. What's the best ways to uh, reach you directly and find out more information about you, please? Let's go ahead and plug all that. Sure. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Um, So just you can uh, look up quick fit training on Facebook and just send a message through there. Also, we can email quickfittraining, uh, ATL, at gmail.com. Uh, or you can just call me at 973-405-3990. And, I'm, and also, Karen, I'm sure, will, as we fade to black, uh, put my business card up there. Yes. Because um, uh, he's super professional and great with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, just I'd love to have a FaceTime session or when this blows over to uh, meet in person. Or meet with Taryn, Taryn Rocks. You know, <laughs> you know how to reach out to him. And, um, yeah. Good. Very well said, Shimon. And then uh, last question I have for you, too. Um, this is kind of a philosophical, deep question. But what, um, you know, just kind of wrap this up here until I speak to you next time. Um, because I always love and enjoy talking to you. But what, if, what has been most profound or what have you learned or what's been most enlightening for you uh, in the last, let's say, couple of weeks uh, with this whole situation? Both personally and professionally. Uh-huh. I know it's a deep um, question, so yeah. Um, I think, I think it's been like how important other people are to us. Like how important, how much I want to see other people, mm-hmm. and how much it's important for mood and for uh, being up to something. Right. Because it's really hard to have a project and do big things in the world without other people. Yes. And and just me greeting other people positively and showing that I'm excited, you know, I'm happy to see them. Is, is really something that I hope I never forget. Mm-hmm. And also about how much opportunities are all around us that we can, we can be what we want to be and we can open up for ourselves projects and things to do and ways to reach people that, um, that we, we, we don't realize. And, and, and it's always available to us and we're at the, we're at the, at the, at the driver's seat of our lives and man, you can do whatever you want. Awesome. Great way to finish uh, and cap everything off there, Shimon. This is terrific. And uh, thank you so much for your time and, uh, again, sharing that incredible story. Uh, What an inspiration that was, a a true testimonial. Uh, Keep doing the great job and great work you're doing. And um, I want to ask you to come back on uh, next month as well. Let's keep rocking these out because uh, who knows? Hey, maybe the next time you and I talk, we're going to be back uh, back in the gyms, back out there doing the boot camps. And not have to be six, ten feet away from each other uh, so we can give each other a high five. Uh, Right. But uh, this is great, Shema. And I really do uh, seriously mean I I hope to meet you in person very soon too. Um, I'm I'm so grateful. I'm going to call my shot on that is we got to go to a restaurant or something or a gym and and just meet or something because I can't. And we can't do that now, obviously, with everything. But right. when this whole thing blows over, when this dust settles, you and I, we need to go get a healthy smoothie shake and meet <laughs> in person. So that way I could shake yeah. your hand in person, uh, yeah. face-to-face. I mean, right here, my wife made me a, um, a homemade uh, 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 frappuccino with uh, almond milk and, and, and cocoa powder and stuff like that. And 
Excellent. That sounds delicious. Yeah. So that's great. And uh, please tell her we said hello. And, um, you know, again, just uh, keep up the great work with you and your wife Thank and uh, all the health and wellness you're providing and sharing with all of your clients. Siobhan, keep it up. Thank you. God bless you too, Taryn. Likewise. Thank you. And uh, here comes your contact information as we fade to black right now, Shimon. We'll see you next time. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 